Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. You've inherited over $3 million, right? We've already started constructing a duplex for us to live together. I've even included the kitchen of my dreams, my mother-in-law says in a tone that's almost dreamy. I've quit my job. I'm planning to start a business with the inheritance that Ashley has received, my husband announces, looking oddly pleased. Wait a minute. I've told you I haven't received any inheritance yet, right? You've quit your job and you're building a duplex. What's happening? Don't lie, it's clear you've inherited. How about we take a trip before the house gets built? How about Hawaii? My father-in-law chimes in, adding to the growing confusion. With my husband and my mother-in-law, what on earth are these people thinking? They want to use the precious inheritance I received from my mother and spend it on whatever they please. Even though I was filled with rage, I didn't know what to do. The story goes back a few months ago. My name is Ashley. I'm 38 years old and work as a high school teacher. I married David, an office worker who is two years older than me 12 years ago. Soon after we got married, our only daughter, Julie, was born. And since then, my days have been filled with work and child rearing. Today is the day I'm visiting my hospitalized mother with my daughter. Oh, Grandma, it's been a while. Well, well, Julie, welcome. My mother lies in her bed, lovingly stroking Julie's hair. Her hand is noticeably thinner, and her complexion looks poor. Next to my mother's bed stands a middle-aged man wearing glasses and a suit. As I nod towards him, he returns the nod and leaves the room. Mom, who is that man? Just an acquaintance, don't worry about it. More importantly, Ashley, are you still doing well, and David, is he well? My mother's eyes, a shade close to blue, sparkle softly as she smiles. She met my father, who ran an import-export business overseas and came to the U.S. as his bride. Raising a child in a foreign country must have been hard, but my mother and father worked together to bring me up. One of the reasons I am able to work as a teacher today is because my mother taught me many things since I was small. I am deeply grateful to my parents who raised me with love in a wealthy family. After my father passed away a few years ago, my mother, now alone, felt ill and was hospitalized. She transferred the business to a relative, and now she spends her remaining days quietly in the hospital. I'm fine, Mom. Is there anything you need? Just having you and Julie come to see me is more than enough. After having such a conversation and spending a good amount of time talking with my mother, Julie and I headed home. Julie talks to my mother about things that happened at school and the book she has recently read. She's at that tricky age of 10, but our relationship is good. Even if I take away my parental bias, I think she is a bright and honest child who is growing up well. We're home. Oh, welcome back. How's my mother-in-law doing? David asks as he greets us. Mom is as usual. How about you? Your seminar, was it good? Oh, I heard some good stuff. Looking forward to the next one. Recently, my husband has been attending seminars on quitting his job and starting a side business. He must want more money, but the company he works for is not top tier. It's not bad, and with my salary, we are doing just fine. I find it distasteful when he is so greedy for money, which I suppose he gets from his parents. Ever since we got married, I've been put off by his parents' excessive stinginess and their habit of begging for small amounts of money whenever we see them. So I've been keeping my distance. They've never given Julie any Christmas gifts. Fortunately, my in-laws live far away, so we don't have to interact much, and my husband does well with household chores, so I guess it's okay. 
As long as I have my mother, my husband, Julie, and our modest but ordinary life, I'm content. Then one day I got a call from the hospital. My mother's condition had suddenly worsened, and she was in critical condition. When my family rushed to the hospital, my mother was barely breathing. Mom, Grandma, no. Ashley, I've always wanted you to be happy. Cherish Julie more than anything. I love you. In the end, those were my mother's last words. My mother, who raised me with all her heart alongside my father, adored Julie from the bottom of her heart. My mother's face in the coffin was peaceful, and all I could do was cry. Julie was by my side, crying with me. A little while after my mother passed away, an envelope arrived at our house from a law firm. Ashley was perplexed as she opened the envelope from an unfamiliar sender. Inside was a document stating, I have been entrusted with your mother's will, which leaves all of her inheritance to you, Ashley. Ashley and her mother had never discussed the subject of inheritance before, so she was taken aback. However, since the letter had indeed arrived, she decided to visit the law firm on her own. Hello, I'm the attorney, Ed. The man who appeared was the middle-aged gentleman with glasses who had been present when she visited her mother in the hospital. You were in my mother's hospital room before. Ashley questioned the man with a familiar face. Yes, we met in the hospital room. Actually, from that time I was entrusted by your mother, he replied in a kind voice. Hearing his voice, Ashley found herself on the verge of tears, and then she was shocked beyond belief. Five hundred million dollars? Yes, Ashley. When your father passed away, you waived your right to the inheritance so your mother could receive it all. When you add that inheritance to your mother's personal assets, even after deducting taxes, this is the amount your mother has named you as the sole heir. My parents had indeed been wealthy, but I hadn't imagined that they had left such an inheritance. I had never asked my parents for money after getting married and avoided the topic of inheritance as it seemed unlucky. Feeling dizzy, Ashley realized this must be an expression of love from her mother. With that thought, she left the procedures to Ed. Your mother cared about you more than anything. She instructed me to assist you if necessary. Please feel free to discuss anything with me. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Ashley bowed her head several times to Ed and left the room. Time passed, and it was around the time of her mother's 49th day memorial service. Her husband, David, began to frequently ask about her mother's inheritance. When they had married, her father was still running his business, so David was vaguely aware that they were wealthy. Each time she asked him to stop talking about it while she was still mourning, he would fall silent, only to subtly bring up the matter of money after some time. The worst were her in-laws. When they came to her mother's memorial service, her father-in-law said, Ashley, if you are worried about the inheritance, we can help. Ha, hey, we've had our fair share of disputes over inheritance when unmarried siblings died. Inheritance can be complicated. If you're troubled, feel free to talk about it. That's right, rely on us too. Ah, yes. Having never shown any inclination to assist them before, she could only give her in-laws a vague response as they put on a knowing facade. Then, about three months after her mother's death, David, who had been quiet recently, finally lost his patience. Hey, have you received your mother's inheritance yet? A bad feeling swept over her quickly. Ashley lied. The procedures are complicated, so not yet. In reality, she had already completed the procedures and upon Ed's advice, had deposited the passbook containing the inheritance in a safe deposit box. But it felt right to say that now. But it's been three months since your mother passed away, right? Haven't you done the procedures yet? Yeah, so what? Well, never mind. I'm going to bed. For some reason, David headed for the bedroom in high spirits. With the nagging unease in her chest, 
Ashley prepared for work the next day and then headed for bed. The next day, as Ashley and Julie were cleaning up after dinner, the doorbell rang. Julie hurried to the door, and when Ashley poked her head out from the kitchen, she saw her in-laws who had dropped by unexpectedly and David returning from work. Why are my father-in-law and mother-in-law here? It's not a big deal, Julie. Go to your room. Julie glanced anxiously at them and headed to her room. What's going on? Never mind that, Ashley. We have something to celebrate today. Ed, her father-in-law, was in high spirits as he opened their fridge and took out a beer. Celebration. You inherited more than $300 million, didn't you? We've already started building a duplex house for us to live together. It even comes with a dreamlike modern kitchen. The one who spoke in the dreamy tone was her mother-in-law. What? What are you talking about, Ashley? Be happy. We've decided to build a duplex house. We used half of our savings and the money that mom and dad have put aside for the down payment. The loan is under my name, but you can pay it all at once with your inheritance, right? Give back to the two of them. I quit my job. I decided to start a business using that inheritance you received. David, her husband, looked somehow satisfied as he said these words. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? I told you I haven't received the inheritance yet, didn't I? And what does quitting your job and a duplex house mean? Don't lie, it's clear you've inherited. How about we go on a trip before the house is built? How about Hawaii? Amidst the escalating chaos, David and her mother-in-law were getting excited, agreeing with what he said. Then David said, laughing scornfully, you're stingy, Ashley. We've looked into it because you kept saying you hadn't received the inheritance. You can't renounce an inheritance if you don't process it within three months. Whether you lied or told the truth about not processing, you still have inherited right. That is, considering the scale of my father-in-law's company, there must be more than $300 million. We'll be able to live comfortably thanks to them. Thank you, mother-in-law. Be sure to prepare the money for the duplex house as soon as possible, and my capital too. Seeing David speak like that made her dizzy. But what on earth are these people who want to use my precious inheritance that I received from my mother as they please and indulge in luxury? Although filled with intense anger and about to yell, she couldn't say a word, worried about Julie, who was in the other room. I'm going outside for a bit, she called out to the three of them, but they didn't hear her, happily discussing how they would use the inheritance. She went out without even taking her wallet. The night wind was cool, and it was then that the tears came. She went to the hilltop park where she used to come with her mother and cried, holding back her voice. Her anger didn't subside. Feeling frustrated and worn out, her heart was exploited, her emotions were a mess, but she couldn't just say she wanted a divorce. They still had their child, Julie. Her mother's words, take care of Julie above all else, came back to her and tears spilled again. Suddenly, someone spoke to her. Surprised, she opened her eyes and the person began to speak softly. Three days later, she called her husband and in-laws to a restaurant with private rooms. So you finally came back home after that day. Did you withdraw the money, Ashley? You shouldn't leave home without telling your husband. Ignoring the words of the three people, she took out a document. It was a divorce notice already filled out. David, I want a divorce. What? What are you saying? Her husband looked panicked and her in-laws looked at each other. I can't go on with you anymore. What are you saying? David's face was turning red as he lashed out at her. You're leaving us after receiving the inheritance. You changed because you got the money, you miser. That's my words, Ashley snapped back. Ever since I inherited my mother's estate, you've been out of control, quitting jobs to start a business, 
deciding to live with in-laws without even asking, taking out my savings to build a two-family home, and then planning a trip to Hawaii. Who is the one who changed when the money came in? I can't possibly stay with such people. Wait, you can't just divorce me like that. That's right, our savings after marriage are shared property. Half of the inheritance belongs to David, no matter what. That's correct. If it comes to that, we will take $300 million with us. David and my in-laws were foaming at the mouth as they approached me. Just as I was about to respond, the door to the private room slid open. Dad, Grandpa, and Grandma should know better. The inheritance Mom received doesn't become shared property, right, Mr. Ed? There stood my daughter, Julie, and Attorney Ed. Julie, and who are you? I'm Attorney Ed. Ashley's mother had entrusted me with this matter, and I've been advising Ashley. As they bowed, Dave seemed flustered. That's all well and good, but wait, the inheritance doesn't become shared property. That's correct. Inherited property from a deceased parent has not become shared property, nor is it subject to the division of property. What? You've got to be kidding me. Is this a mistake? In front of the flustered three, I was taken aback. It seems that they really thought that the inheritance I received would become their property. In that case, it's even more reason not to divorce. I'll claim it to you no matter what. My husband, with bloodshot eyes, shouted out without any regard. Stop it already, that was July. She continued her calm words. Since mom suggested divorce, no, since mom inherited the estate, has dad ever thought about mom once? Grandpa and grandma only ever talk about money. They never once mentioned me. I can't consider such people as family. David and my in-laws were taken aback. The day I was crying about my inheritance, Julie was the one who spoke up. Julie came running after me and she told me, Dad, Grandpa, and Grandma are too much, trying to take Grandma's legacy for themselves. Mom, I'm on your side. Let's fight this together. With those words, I made up my mind, contacted Ed, and arranged this meeting. Julie, it's not like that. Dad wants you to be happy. That's right, Julie, dear. You'd be happier living with us, wouldn't you? That's right. A child shouldn't interfere. My desperate husband and still assertive in-laws. Julie, with an exasperated look on her face, said, I'm going with Mom. I can't bear to be with you anymore. Julie said this and looked away. Anyway, we've made up our minds. Julie and I will be leaving. As I said this calmly, David got angry. A, I've never cheated, and you can't force a divorce. I'll hire a lawyer. We'll get that money one way or another. If that's the case, I will take care of it from here, Ed spoke quietly. The issue here is whether there are grave reasons for not continuing the marriage, quitting his job, using the household savings without permission, deciding to live together, and Julie is saying she can't bear it. There are various points we can argue. Moreover, your daughter recorded the sound of all of you begging for Ashley's inheritance. That should also serve as evidence. David slumped and my in-laws turned pale. After seeing that, Julie and I left the restaurant. A year later, thanks to Ed's efforts, my divorce with David was finalized. Julie and I moved into the house my mother had lived in, but there were several times when we received letters saying, I love you, come back, and David was seen loitering near Julie's school. So we asked Ed to apply for a restraining order. After that, it was quiet. According to the rumors, they actually did build a two-family home. My already retired in-laws had to work in a factory, and although David looked for work, he couldn't find any It is now doing manual labor. I heard from the neighbors that there were constant arguments in the new two-family house because of their troublesome fights. They became disliked by everyone in the neighborhood. Julie and I are still living peacefully, helping each other. A while ago, Julie said, 
I want to study abroad in the country where grandma grew up, so we cut ties completely with my ex-husband. We made up our minds to move overseas. We used a bit of my mother's inheritance, but I'm sure she would be pleased. Now, Julie seems to be enjoying school every day, and I've started working as a teacher there. I hope these peaceful days continue.